Guys, I'm going to come to you with what I think, uh, what I hope is going to be a quick project. Um, something I've been wanting to do, something you guys have mentioned in, in some of your comments, and that's uh, using sand as a flux rather than borax. And, you know, it's a debatable thing anyway whether you need flux or not, and some of you guys have opinions on that. But I've never, I've never tried sand. So I'm using uh, bandsaw blades because I understand kind of how they work in a, in a forge welding situation to try to eliminate some of the variables. And I'm just going to use plain old play sand. Now, I haven't done a lot of research as to whether or not there's a particular type of sand you should use, but sand is sand, right? And if I were a Roman 16 billion years ago, chances are I'd be going to the beach to get some sand. I don't know. But we're going to try that, and we're going to see what happens. All right, so let's get this heated up, and we'll use sand as flux, if we can. Blades, you want to keep flipping it, because these outside ones are getting super hot, and the inside are still cool. Also, I found that normally, originally, I would weld these sides, not all the way shut, but several welds in there. I like to keep that as open as possible, so that we can get as much of the flux in there as possible. A little bit of heat on this. I'm just gonna again. I haven't used sand before, so I'm not sure how this is all gonna work. I'm just gonna dump some sand. Oh wow, that's too much sand down there. I don't see it melting like you would. I'm gonna need my spoon, like you would um, borax, but it's sticking a little. So again, I'll take a little bit of time here until we get an idea of what we got going on here. Try to get some down in there. I'm going to heat this back up again, and then we'll squeeze it together. We'll reflux it. I want to see that sand melting. And again, maybe you can't just use plain old place in it. Who knows? Save my sand. Right, let's just go ahead and start closing up some of those gaps in there. Nothing crazy. And we're going to reflux this. One more time. Again, I don't see it melting like you would. I don't have the right dish here. I don't see it melting like you would uh, borax. But it doesn't mean it isn't working, I guess. Try to get it in between those cracks. I don't know. We'll try it again. Certainly and not getting the visual feedback that I get out of borax. That things are hot enough, maybe they're not hot enough. Maybe you gotta go a little hotter before you flux. We're saying we're gonna figure it out right now. I brought it up to a forge welding heat. So let's put our sand in there now. I see it's sticking a little better. So maybe we learn that we need to be a little hotter than we would with borax, which I'm sure if we just did a little research on the internet, we'd find out that their melting temperatures are different. But that sand is down, down in there, I will call it fluxed. And let's go for a forge weld. Or the sand flowing like borax does, but we are at the temperature. That's all we'll do, but we do have a bubbling out. All right, there it is. That's proof that that sand is liquefied. That's cool. We'll bring her up to another temperature and uh, hit her again. Actually, let's let's reflux it. That's what I would do with the borax. Oh, that's hot on my hands. Back in, we'll try one more forge on it. For the second forge weld, we got the same kind of reaction that we would with uh, borax. All right, that's all the flux that's squeezed out of there. I see we have a successful forge weld. And just for the fun of it. Let's go ahead and uh, fold this and see what happens. I'm going to make sure this is nice and clean before I do the fold as best as I can. Normally I'd go over to a grinder, but let's go ahead and cut and fold.
the trick. We'll heat that up, put a fold on. Come back out here, heat up our inside. We'll go ahead and throw a little flux on that. So we got something on there to start with. Do our fold. Get her tucked in there like that. Flux that inside. I uh, will have to say one thing about it. Sand looks a lot more like Sherwell. That's a flux that the Amish showed me when I was out there once. But let's bring that up temperature and let's see what we got. That temperature, maybe a little above. I don't like it. We didn't catch anything on the fire. It splatters like borax does, I'll tell you. I think it works. And we have a very good forge weld there. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to do a second one just for the sake of doing it. What I'll do is I'll go back and uh, I wonder why my camera keeps moving. I hope it's not moving the whole time. Um, I'll grind off the edges because I didn't, I didn't take the teeth off. So we'll take the, the edges, which will cause cracks to out, and uh, we'll etch it or something, and we'll see what it looks like. I'd say it worked. The question is, do you need it at all? Which, we will go ahead and attempt to answer here in a few seconds. Because with any scientific experiment, okay, with any experiment, it's good to have a control. So when I put together that first piece, I also, exact same size, exact same number of layers, put another one together. Let's get our last four twelve done here. And I can say we are as stuck as we need to be. Again, I'm not going to work these edges because I knew I was going to grind those off anyway. And there we have it. It's a good stick. I like it. Now, can you forge wild? was saying the answer so far is yes. Does it do you any good? Does it help you? Let's try the control. While that other one's heating up, which I don't have much time, you can see as this thing was cooling down, it, I'd hear a pop crackle, and that's uh, the sand glass breaking off the outside. So, definitely put a coating on it. Same scenario, no flux whatsoever. A little bit more heat on it. We'll see what we end up with. There we go. Nowhere near the splatter that we had before, right? But I'd say that was a 412. Not bad at all. Let's do a second one and we'll fold it like we did the first one and see what we end up with. Alright, we're up to temperature again. Good second weld. Clean it. We'll cut it. We did the first one. Fold it, and that'll be pretty close to apples to apples if you ask me. Don't want to go too far. I think that's close enough. Let's heat it up, clean it. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. He did not weld all the way there. Hmm. So we're going to heat it. We're going to clean it like we did with my brush. The other piece, we did not forge weld. That's quite, look at that, just pulling apart there. So that's interesting. We got some of it. Let's keep going. if we can. Try to get as much air out of there as possible. I did not expect that. I thought this stuff would just weld right up. Let's give her a go. Well, this is the non-flux one. Lots of heat on that one. Hopefully we got stuff stuck together. 
Now I'm pretty sure I was hot enough on the previous ones. This one I went a little hotter on. I hate splattering stuff like that around the shop, but it looks okay right at the moment. I don't know, that looks good. Maybe, well, I don't know. Jeez, I don't know. Well, we gave it two on the last one. We'll give it two on this one, and then we'll continue on. Now for the final weld. And we will let this one cool down. And we will grind the edges off like we did, like we're going to do the other one. And we'll see what we end up with. I'll be back. A couple of things. Um, first of all, this is the sand fluxed one. It looks good. It ground well. I see a couple of things in there that raises concern. All right, but whether or not we can work that out, I'm not sure. This was the no flux at all well. And you can see we got lots of concerns there, and I went pretty deep with the grinding, I really did. Uh, even on that edge there. Uh, a lot of this kind of stuff going on, on the outer layers. And oddly, and I have no idea, that there was something on the outside of this steel, it must have been carbon. Hit it with the grinder, just a black powder starts, it looked like smoke at first, came off. Ground much harder to get that stuff off of there, so I mean, there's something more to the story that I didn't that I didn't expect. So that's what they look like ground up. Let's go ahead and etch them. We'll see what the pattern looks like and see if anything else jumps out. And then we'll bring them up to a forging temperature, not a welding temperature, and we'll flatten them this way. All right? And uh, see if they stay together. And that's it for today. We are out of the etch. This is the sand flux welded one. Looks pretty. Layers look good down in there. Couple of boo boos, but not bad. This is the no flux one. Again, not quite as pretty in some spots, in a lot of spots actually. You can see what you what before the etch, way down at the bottom here. It's now it doesn't look like it's solid down. So let's go ahead and test this final test. What I what I what I'm gonna do is take this and just squeeze it this way under a normal forging temperature and we're going to see whether or not the thing delaminates either one of them we're going to start it off with the no flux one and again we're not trying to do the right thing we're trying to compare apples to apples and you can see that that one did not forge weld entirely some of it's there Oh, well, actually, almost none of it's there. So I find that interesting. So we'll stop with, right there. We'll put the other one in. We'll see what we get out of that. The camera's off center all day today. All right, now this one is the uh, sand fluxed one. So we basically did the exact same thing. And I think we got much better results out of this one for sure. Let me pull them back out. Alright guys, so here you have it. This is the, uh, the no flux weld. And this is the flux weld. Now the fluxed sand, using uh, plain old sand as flux. Now this did fail in a few spots, but if you notice, they're all coming from the ends. And normally you'd cut that, I mean I would because I suck at welding, but the ends would be cut off, the edges would be cut or ground off so that you don't have any of those existing fractures, not really fractures, layers, unwelded layers uh, to, uh, to delaminate back up through. But definitely a huge difference uh, in how the material did weld versus the no, the, uh, no sand weld that I did. Now again, don't get me wrong, this is, do you need do you need flux at all to weld? The answer is no. I'm not sure if carbon steel likes it and mild doesn't. There's a, I think there's a there's a, there's information there. Check it out. You know, look it up online. Um, in I guess the, the the moral of this story is: Can Chandler forge weld with sand? It looks like it. yes. Does forge does uh, flux, whether it's sand or borax, help Chandler forge weld? Because I'm kind of new at it, right? 
Uh, absolutely, no doubt about it. With the borax, I would have had a really good forge weld. I've done that several times. With the sand, I got an okay forge weld. I didn't like it. I like that visual feedback of the borax melting and the whole glassy, the glassy thing going on. Especially in a coal forge, I think uh, that flux certainly helps. Um, but there you have it. Hopefully you guys learned as much as I did today. Uh, if I needed to, I guess I'd go to the beach to weld. But I'm going to go to the laundry aisle at the grocery store and get some borax. So hope you learned something. Thanks for coming along. We'll catch you on the next one.